Okay, now we can see um, chapter 10 in this chapter, we talk about uh, capsule budgeting. So capital budgeting decision. Uh, okay, make sure you, uh, you type your name in a chat box. The learning objectives uh, explain the capital budgeting process, calculate the payback period, net present value, internal rate of return, modified internal rate of return, um, describe the capital rationing and how firms decide which project to select and measure the risk of a capital budgeting project, explain a risk adjusted discount rate. So uh, the capital budgeting process is evaluating a proposed investment projects for a firm as a manager must determine which projects are acceptable and must rank mutually uh, exclusive uh, mutually exclusive uh, project by order of desirability to the firm. If the firms are independent, okay, the firms are independent, so we don't have to um, we don't have to um, to rank a different project. So the only thing is you need to choose one. If but for mutually exclusive project, uh, we are going to um, order these two uh, different projects and to choose the best one. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the difference between uh, independent project and mutually exclusive project later. Uh, to accept or reject a project, uh, basically we use a four different method. Uh, it's called a payback period, net present value, internal rate of return and modified internal rate of return. So uh, let's see we have a uh, different project. Uh, so we give you example and to show you how to uh, do payback period, net present value uh, and the internal rate of return. Let's see we have uh, project A and B have the following expected cap flows. So for these two projects, you can see time zero, that means uh, this is at present. Uh, you get a parenthesis, okay, uh, for that $10,000 initial investment. So you have a boss project uh, with initial investment of 10,000 US dollars. So the 10,000 US dollars is a negative. That means the money comes out of your pocket and it's your initial investment. The time one, two, three, four, that means at the end of uh, year one, year two, three or four you will receive cash flow 3,500 at the end of the first year. So first year you will receive 3,500, second year 3,500, third year 35. So that's your future revenue. So the 
project, the project investment is ten thousand U.S. dollars. In the future, we'll bring you thirty-five hundred for next four years. For project B, uh, this is a little bit different. Project B is uh, uh, you have initial investment ten thousand U.S. dollars. The first year generate revenue five hundred. Second year five hundred. The third year forty-six hundred. And the fourth year is generate ten thousand U.S. dollars. So you can see uh, Project B uh, as the time goes, the revenue uh, become in, uh, increasing, okay, exponentially increasing. So that's uh, the Project B and the Project A. So the cash flow they generate equally uh, during the next four years, so equally. Uh, so you might think about, you know, just intuitively, and you wanted to think about which project uh, you should choose. Um, So just to give you idea, you know, give me an idea. So you think about it. So think about which project is a good project. Okay, uh, so the first uh, method I'm going to introduce is called the payback period. The payback period is um, is to showing you uh, how many years you can get your all your money back. Okay, all your investment, many years you can get all your money back. Okay. So we can see the project uh, A, uh, you invest $10,000. After the end of the first year, so you, you end up with uh, 6,500. So that's uh, your initial investment is uh, in short, is 6,500. So you, the end of the first year you got 3,500. And the second year, okay, you got another 3,500. So in that case, you're still short 3,000, right? It's three short 3,000. And the third year, so you got another 3,500. So this time when you get 3,500, you can see it could cover all your initial investment. The money you left is 3,000. So plus you have 500 more earnings. So for project A, so you might image that. So you got all your money back somewhere between year two and three, right? Year two and three. So more accurate, so you wanted to know what exactly, how many years. So that is going to be uh, your payback period is, you see between year two and three, okay, the whole year generates 3,500 cash flow, and you are in short of 3,000. So basically, that's how you're gonna calculate um, the money, okay? So it's going to be, um, okay, the whole year generates 3,500, but you are in short of 3,000. So, <clears throat> Is going to be three thousand dollars divided by thirty five hundred equal to um, point 
nine. So that's a, um, where you got that point nine. So the payback period is 2.9 years <coughs> between year two and three. So the payback period is equal to two plus 0 0.9 is going to be 2.9 years. That's how you get um, the payback period, uh, 2.9 years. Do you have any questions? Okay, similarly, and we- oh, I have a question. Uh, yes. Where did we get the two from? Did to it. Oh, the two years. Yes, is a two years. So it, you know that you uh, the money you know you will uh, you will get all your uh, money back between somewhere between year two and three, right? So that's uh, why you add a two in the two years between year two and three. So we, this part is 0 0.9 is just give you the proportion of the year. So for that year, so it's the whole year, you know, so that's one, 0 0.9 year. So that's give you uh, the, because this uses the money you have uh, left, you 3,000, divided by the total uh, cash flow generated during that year. I'm confused why it's 2.9. Um, are they generating money from that project throughout the year that's coming in? Because if they, if it only took 500 to get them to the payback, can yes. they, can they get that earlier in the year? Not uh -huh. Yes, that's uh, getting earlier than that year. So basically, um, I can see, okay, this uh, is much easier to understand is that, you know, this is a, like draw a line, for example. Okay, this is the whole, year. this line, you know, is the revenue they're gonna generate that year is 35. Okay, so th that's a, for this, uh, this line I see is a 35, right? For mm -hmm. the year. So we don't need the whole year to generate this much because uh, you only need uh, is uh, 3,000, right? You only need $3,000 to get all your money back. But if you take the whole year, for example, that the payback period is exactly three year, that's going to be 3,500. Now you don't need 3,500. So you need is um, only 3,000. Uh, okay, I see. So you only need 3,000. Okay, so let's say the whole this line is 100%. So let's say this one is uh, 100. So we have uh, just uh, um, okay, one hundred percent. Okay, well, all this number is is one. So, what will be the percentage of this whole year? So you can generate only three something. So, what you need to do is just, uh, you know, is three thousand divided by thirty five. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a. Uh, um, you don't need to spend 100% of the whole year. You only need to, is like a- Just uh, most of it, 90. Right? Yes, 90%. Okay, okay. Or just, uh, you only need 90% of the whole year, 90% of the year to generate 3,000 because your extra 500 somewhere here. So since that we talk about, you know, that only for this year between year two and three, so you know it's gonna be uh, two year more. So two year more, so that's why 
uh, we add year two. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we add year two, so it's two plus that, and then plus year. <clears throat> okay, that's a, it takes about 2.9 years. Okay, similarly, as we do this, a project B is that, um, you can see project B, we have um, 500, okay, 500, uh, 4,600 and 10,000. So, um, if we can do this, okay, so you, you get 10,000 after the first year, 500, you end up with 90, uh, 9,900, uh, 9,900, uh, 9,500. Okay, after the first year. And the second year is 9,000 left. And 9,000, uh, after the third year, so you end up with 44,000. So the 46,000 you already got back, so end up with the 44,000, you still didn't get it, right? Okay, so we're gonna do this one, same thing. So you have to have like a, a whole year. So you don't need is a 44. So 44,000, for the whole year, you generate 10,000, right? Generate 10,000, so the percentage is going to be uh, 44%. 44%. And then you see this uh, um, here, so it's beyond year three. So between year three and four, so it's going to be uh, three, and a four somewhere between three and four, so it's going to be year three, okay, plus that 44 percent. Well, that's why you got 3.44 percent, okay. For project B, it takes um longer time, which is 3.4 years, you can get your all your money back, so that's not uh, uh. That's not good comparing project A. So project A give you shorter time to get all your money back. Project B give you longer time to get all your money back. So we, uh, in this case, so we think we should uh, get project A rather than project B because A is shorter, right? Shorter time. Or your money back. Okay, and next one uh, I would like to introduce is called uh, net present value. Okay, so first, uh, why we uh, we do not use payback period. Um, uh, very often be when you do uh, capital budgeting. So doing capital budgeting, uh, you can think about that, okay, using payback period. Um, it's just give you a roughly idea, so how many money, uh, how many years you can get your money back. But there are two things, okay. One is the money uh, you invest, okay, have uh, opportunity cost. So opportunity cost. So for example, you can uh, put your money in the bank and it still generate interest. Okay, you don't just want get all your money back. You still wanted to compare uh, the uh, opportunity cost. You, you could earn interest instead of just doing nothing. And another thing is that um, the money you invest today worth more than the money you're gonna get in the future. So that's uh, 
uh, we talked about before in chapter uh, eight about time value of money, right? Time value of money. So this 10,000 US dollars worth more than the $10,000 you receive in year four. So that's uh, uh, the two questions. Okay, one is that the payback period, uh, the payback period uh, does not include the time value of money concept. And also the project must Know, have its own required rate of return. Um, so we typically use is do the capital budget method using a net present value. So the net present value considers the uh, time value of money. So you are not going to compare the money, uh, the same amount of money of today and the same amount of money in the future. So you convert to the present value of the future uh, value cash flow you receive. Okay, so you, uh, when I do that net present value, so you can see net present value is discounted cash flow in the first year, discounted cash flow in the second year, and until year end, so you sum them up, okay, minus your initial investment. So this is your initial investment. Uh, so for these two projects, we're gonna work on that. Uh, when you do that present value, remember you need to have your required rate of return, which is the K uh, equal to 10%. So we have the now you can uh, you open the Excel spreadsheet and type in uh, the numbers for these two, right? Using the same example. So let's do this. You can open the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the K equal to, let's put this here. So we have uh, two project, the project A, and this is a uh, project B. We have, um, this is year or time. Zero, one. It is uh, both projects. Uh, Uh, expected to last for only four years. <clears throat> uh, this is negative because this is your initial investment. So you think about this as your initial investment. Uh, the first line is your investment. Okay. And then you have uh, two projects. And this is the required rate of return. So required return um, okay, required return is K equal to 10%. Okay, so uh, now we start to using the net present value. So how you do the net present value? Net present value, okay. Net present value equal to, uh, you can do the net present value function, V function, that's a, we usually do net present value function. You choose a rate. So the rate is 10%. Okay. And then you select values. Okay, this uh, uh, remembers to select all the positive values. Okay, positive values. And then you plus your initial investment. Okay, that's your net present value. <clears throat> Okay, in that present value, uh, you have um, uh, 
the cash flow and required rate of return, initial investment. So using the net present value function. Okay, so you, okay, so you can see they're using percent. So you might format your cell to numbers, keep only two decimals. Okay, the decimal places um, need adjusted to be two, two decimals. Now we do the same thing for project B. Project B uses a net present value function. Okay, the rate is 10% and I choose all those positive numbers. And you plus the initial investment. Okay, that's your net present value. Format, format your cell and change the numbers to two decimals. Okay, so you have project A and B. Okay, so uh, you can see if, uh, um, if these two projects, okay, are independent, so both of the net present value is positive, okay? So you can um, see the net present value you get for project A and B, okay? Both are positive. So we have uh, positive numbers, right? So net present value for project A and project B. So we have um, the criteria is a net present value decision rule, okay? The decision rule is that um, if that present value is positive, you accept the project. Accept uh, is positive, accept. So, um, so what that means is that both project have positive net value, Okay, so if they are independent, you accept the boss project. So boss projects are acceptable because the not present value are positive. If the uh, project are mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive, accept the project with a higher not present value. Mutually exclusive, that means you can choose only one project. Okay, so you can, if you choose A, you cannot choose B. If you choose B, you cannot choose A. So it's mutually exclusive. So in this case, you see the net present value for project B actually is a higher. So with the higher net present value, so we means we accept project B, okay, project B because project B with a higher net present value. Okay, so we, uh, we finished the uh, net present value. And also we can do is uh, doing the internal rate of return. So internal rate of return, uh, what is that? Internal rate of return is the return that makes the net present value equal to zero. Okay, so you can see if you, what will be the required rate of return that makes your net present value equal to zero. So you didn't have any gains, you didn't have any losses. So that's an uh, internal rate of return. Now we go back to, to check what is the internal rate of return. Okay, the internal rate of return for these two projects. Okay, for project A, so we use internal rate of return function. Okay, internal rate of return function, you select all those numbers. Okay, including the first negative one. Okay, the first negative one. Okay, that's a, 
uh, internal rate of return. Okay, when you click on enter, so you can see the internal rate of return is 15, is a 14.96%. And then this is the internal rate of return. Okay, so you see like all the internal rate of return. And so like all those um, cash flows starting from time zero until time four, internal rate to return, okay, 14%, you add two more decimals, is a 13.5%. Okay, internal rate to return, uh, the criterion is that, okay, if the internal rate to return is higher than the required rate of return, you accept the project. You see both of them are greater than 10%. So if they are independent, you're supposed to accept both projects. If they are mutually exclusive, what about mutually exclusive? Okay, you accept the project if the internal rate of return is higher. So you see, so you can see project A actually internal rate of return is higher. So if they are mutually exclusive, you can choose only one. Okay, in this case, uh, you're supposed to choose project A. Okay, right? So you might have a question is asking me about, hey professor, you know, where I, I see that not present value uh, supposed to choose project B, what a, and an internal rate of return supposed to choose project A. Why they are conflict? So, which method is better? Okay, so I am gonna leave this question for you to read the book. So, um, what if the criterion, the internal rate of return and net present value, give you conflict? Uh, the conclusion or result. So we're gonna solve this problem and next time, okay? Um, so another method is called a modified internal rate of return. So the modified internal rate of return is going to say they calculate all the future value, right? They calculate all the future value and they sum them up and compare the present value and the future value. So modified internal rate of return, we can easily handle that using Excel spreadsheet. So in that Excel spreadsheet, so we have modified internal rate of return. Okay, so we're gonna do is that type this function is MI or modified internal rate to return. Okay, so modified internal rate to return, you see like all these values, and then your finance rate and in reinvestment rate, so you see like all spouse rate. Okay, the modified internal rate to return. Okay, so you can have uh, 13 percent at two decimals, you get 12.8 percent. And then you do the modified internal rate to return for MIRR for project B. So you see like all these values and comma, finance rate, reinvestment rate. So you have your modified internal rate to return, click on enter. Okay, you add decimals. Okay. So you can see modified internal rate to return, this one is the higher, right? So, um, make sure, so you using different method and then do uh, comparison and also understand uh, the projects are independent or the projects are mutually exclusive. So then you can make a decision, right? You can make a decision. Uh, so we stop here. So next time, uh, uh, this Wednesday, we talk about how to solve the conflict 
if you have two projects and using internal rate and return and that present value give you a different conclusion. I have a question. Yes. For the modified internal rate of return, we used 10% um, for both finance rate and reinvestment rate? Yes, yes. Okay. Both of them are like 10%. When we calculated the, I think it was the payback period. There was one uh -huh. where you got three point four four, I think. Uh, the payback period is going to be, okay. So you you calculate how much money left, right? Yeah. So how much money? Uh, how yeah, much that one. Money yeah, I did it, and I got three point four six. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, you did it wrong because this you see, uh, the end up with nine thousand, right? This is a nine thousand, and then nine thousand minus forty six hundred, you end up with a forty four thousand left. Yeah, so it's a forty four. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't forget to type your um, type your name in the chat box. And to uh, I will keep your attendance, okay. And also, uh, I want uh, please let me know if you are going to graduate in in May, okay. Uh, graduating senior will take the final e exam early, so make sure uh, to let me know if you are going to graduate uh, in May. Um, you can send me an email and let me know. Mm. Okay, let's end up here. So uh, see you on Wednesday.